Hello everyone. So in the previous lesson we looked at Newton's first law, which said that an object will stay at rest or it will move at a constant velocity unless the forces are unbalanced. So if the forces are unbalanced, now we're going to look at what happens to the object. So let's say this person has a pedaling force of 100 newtons and the total friction is 70 newtons. Then we can see that the pedaling force is stronger. So what will happen to the object? Well, let's rewind a bit. Let's say this person is riding along at 20 kilometers per hour and the forwards pedaling motion is 50 newtons and the friction force is 50 newtons. Then Newton's first law tells us that this object will continue to move at 20 kilometers per hour. Why? Because the forces are balanced. Let's say the person now decides to start pedaling a little faster and so they increase their forwards force to 70 newtons. What would happen to the speed of the object? Well, it would start to increase 21, 22, 23 and it would increase like that. Then, let's say at 23 kilometers per hour they drop the forward force to 50 newtons again. Then what would happen? Well, now the speed will stay constant again, just like Newton's first law told us. They told us, well, he told us, that if the forces are balanced, then the object will move at a constant velocity. So then the object will stay at 23 kilometers per hour. If we then change the pedaling force to 40 newtons, but the friction is still 50, then the object would start slowing down, 22, 21. Let's say it gets to 20, and the, f the forward force gets changed to 50 newtons, then the speed will stay constant again. And so as long as the forces are balanced, then the speed or the velocity stays constant. If the forces are not balanced, then the speed changes. Now what is that called when speed changes? That is acceleration. Now we shouldn't call it speed because in physics we call it velocity. So acceleration is that thing when velocity changes. Now that is not the proper definition. But remember, I'm trying to increase your understanding of the way things work. So when your velocity is changing, that is called acceleration. Here's an example. So let's say we have a scenario where here we've got time. Oh, this is in seconds and the velocity is meters per second. Now at time one, the person is traveling at five. Then at time two, they're traveling at six. So they're getting faster and faster. Does that mean that the pedaling is stronger or is the friction stronger? Well, that means that the forward pedaling is stronger because the velocity is getting what's increasing. By how much is it increasing every second? Well, it's increasing by one. And so we call that the acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be equal to one. Now, what is changing? Well, it's changing, the speed is, the velocity is changing by one meter per second, per second. Does that make sense? One meter per second, that's how much the speed, the velocity is changing by. And how often is it doing that? Well, it's doing that every single second. So acceleration is changing by one meter per second per second. And so we say one meter per second to the minus two, because we have second twice. And so Newton's second law is all about what happens to the object if the forces are unbalanced. Because remember, the first law is all about when the forces are balanced. The second law is about when the forces are not balanced. So here comes Kevin's definition for Newton's second law. It says that an object will accelerate. Now, what does accelerate mean? It's when the velocity changes. If the forces are unbalanced. Now remember accelerate also means that the object can slow down. It's not only about speeding up. So that is the definition. Now we need to add a little bit more to that. Now let's say that both of these people have the same pedaling force. Okay, so let's say that it is 70 newtons and so this guy can also pedal with 70 newtons and let's say that the friction on both of them is the same. It's 20 newtons and 20 newtons. Now, judging by the size of these two characters, which person's bicycle is going to change speed the most? Because obviously this one's 70 and this one's 20, and so it's the same for this guy. But because this person is slightly larger, their bicycle is going to change speed a little bit slower than the person 
who is slightly lighter. And so the acceleration that's going to take place is also affected by the mass. If the mass is very high, so if the mass is very high, then the acceleration is going to be lower. And so what do we call that when the one goes up and the one goes down? That's called inversely proportional. So we're going to add a little bit more to our definition. And now we're going to add a last little piece. Now we have a different situation. Now we've got two objects that have the same mass. But if you look at this first object, it's got 100 newtons pedaling force and 20 newtons of friction. So what is the result of that? Well, that's 80 newtons to the left. If you look at this guy on the right, it's 70 newtons and 20 newtons. So the result is going to be 50 newtons to the left. So which person's uh, velocity is going to change the most? So which one is going to have the highest acceleration? Well, obviously, it's the one on the left because the resultant force is larger. And so the acceleration, now what is acceleration? It's when the velocity changes. So the velocity is going to change a lot faster for the person on the left. And so if the overall force is larger, then the acceleration is larger. So when the force goes up, then the acceleration goes up. That is called directly proportional because if the one goes up, the, one, the other one goes up. So we're going to finish off our definition like this. So this is what Newton said in his second law. An object will accelerate. What does that mean? It means that this, the velocity will change if the forces are unbalanced. Okay, so that's, we understand that. Then this acceleration, so this change in the velocity is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So that means if the mass is very low, then the acceleration will be very high. And it's directly proportional to the net force acting on the object. The net force is the overall force. So if this is 100 and this is 20, then the net force is 80. If this is 100, sorry, if this is 50 and this is 20, then the net force is 30. So the acceleration is directly proportional to the net force acting on the object. So if the net force is very high, then the acceleration is also going to be very high. That's why we call it directly proportional. And so that's all I want to go over in this lesson, guys. Newton's second law. Thank you for watching.